So this is the look off of the customer's roof. We're facing uh, almost south here. So you can see he does have a large uh, building in the background there. He does have some trees, a large pine tree he, here over to the east. There's a, a few trees here. Um, but we should get a uh, pretty good reception here. So we're going to put our mount right here. I'll just show you how to find the roof rafter so you can leg screw the mount into the roof properly. Okay, so now we're just going to find the roof rafter in the roof. So I'm going to tap if you listen. So that's the roof rafter there. So that's where we want the center screws and the mount to, to be screwed in there so we have a nice stable, uh, strong backing to the mount. This is the mount we're going to use. So those are the two holes there that we're going to have legs screwed right into that roof rafter. And then we put a couple in the side here to stabilize it. I'm just going to show you the way that we seal the roof. We have a putty here that we use. It's a very sticky putty, this gray putty. And it creates a very strong membrane, waterproof membrane, uh, between the, your roof and the mount. When you screw into the roof, this putty twists around the screw and gets pulled into the hole. So it creates a complete seal, uh, much better than tar. Tar, you know, dries and cracks over time where where this remains sticky and and pliable. So I'm just going to put the putty on the holes where the screws will be mounted through. And then we will put it on the roof and screw it into the roof. Okay, I just wanted to show you the screw that we use as well. Um, this screw here has a rubber grommet behind this little washer. So when it gets screwed into the roof, the, the rubber washer creates a seal against the uh, antenna mount. So that's the type of screw we use. So not only do we have that, that gray putty membrane, but we also have this rubber seal here, which helps a lot as well. So we're going to put our first screw in the top here, in the center of the rafter. There's our first screw. Then we want to level it up. So we want to make sure that we're level sideways here. And if it needs any adjustment, then you can always tap it a bit with the, the hammer. left or right till you get the mount level. So have a look at that. That would be, that's level side to side there, which is important. Okay, now I'll put in the screw in the bottom. You can see the gray putty coming up through there as we put the screws in. There we go. Now we'll put the two in here. helps to stabilize the mount. You can see the putty as it threads around the screw. There you go, you can see the putty, how it's formed all around and created a good seal.
all the way around the mount. Now we're going to tighten it up. So it uses a 7 16 wrench here on the mount. So we'll just tighten that up. You can use a ratchet as well, of course. Once you get the center bolt tight, then what you want to do is put the level on here and level it up this way. So again, we have, have it the bubble centered between the two lines. Okay, that's good. Now we'll put the antenna on. So this is the antenna we're going to use today. This is our best antenna. We tested this antenna against all the big brand names like the Channel Master 8 Bay and this one always seems to work best giving you the most channels in the Toronto and GTA area. This antenna has a very wide pickup which a lot of other antennas don't have. Uh, it's able to reach the southern areas of Buffalo but also gives a wide pickup area so you can get channels from East Buffalo and even over to Rochester depending upon where you are and how good of a look angle you have. So we just tighten these up. Uh, we will do some adjustments and then once we're done we usually tighten these up with a set of pliers. So that's it. We'll put on the side arms. This is for picking up the VHF side, which in the Toronto area, Channel 9 CFTO CTV is uh, broadcasting in VHF. So the main antenna is a UHF antenna, which the majority of channels broadcast in UHF. And then these here are the VHF for Channel 9 and 11 in the Toronto area. So that's it, that's about the look angle we're going to start with, so we'll hook up our coax now and I'll show you how to ground the antenna. Okay, so now we're going to do the connection on the coax cable. We have a coax stripper. We uh, put it on like this. You know, there's different types, but this one in particular, it has the little ridge here. And you just click it on like that. We twist it around like this. When we pull it off, it's best to fold back the grounding wires. We use a Gilbert uh, connector. I mean, there's different types of connectors, snap and seal. This particular one does seal at the back end of the cable. We'll push that on to make sure that the white is flush there. Use our compression crimp tool. So we insert it like that. And then it compresses it. That's the finished connection. You can see the copper, the white. You want to make sure there's no ground filaments touching the center copper conductor. Um, I also like to just trim off if the, if the copper is long like that. I usually just rest my snips on like that and just cut it so you have a proper length. Uh, the other thing we do is we put this uh, sealant on, it's dielectric, uh, dielectric grease for coaxial connectors with Teflon. So this helps seal the connection so water can't get in, any moisture. Um, 
which could cause the system to stop working. So just put a little bit of that grease in there and then now we'll connect it to the antenna. I'm going to peel back the ground a bit because we're going to ground that to the actual mount. The antenna is obviously grounded to the mount the way it's connected. So we'll come up here, we feed it through the mount. The connection's underneath so we just leave a bit of a drip loop and then we put our connection on. Thread that on. Uh, you can use a wrench on this to tighten it, but be very careful. A lot of these connections uh, like this are very delicate, so you just want to snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it because you can break the element inside. So, there, that's good. So, now We'll ground the mount here. Everything's metal here, so the uh, the antenna here, this metal part, you know, this is connected to the mount. So we've got a, a ground screw here. So we're just gonna cut that off, and we're going to strip a bit here. Put on a loop, so we'll just grab it and put on a bit of a loop there so that it can thread on. Okay, so I'm just going to connect the ground here now. You always want to have the end going clockwise around so that when you do the, when you tighten it up, it's going to tighten and twist around rather than come loose. We'll pull that tight and tighten it up. There you go. So that's all grounded and then we'll show you of course, uh, when we get the ground lock, how we ground it properly there. So now we'll feed the cable down. So we like to run the cabling neatly here so we've run it neatly across the peak of the roof and then we run it down the side. Uh, we tuck it under the shingles so that uh, you can't see the cable, so it's nice and neat as it comes down the roof. So when you look here now, you can't see the cabling. It's all hidden um, nicely under the shingles here. So it runs along, and then we also will hide it along through the eaves trough. Uh, again, so you're not going to see any cabling running you know, across the roof or down the roof. So here's the cabling here, so as you see again, we can just tuck it underneath so it's out of the weather, out of the way. Uh, it's up on top of this, but underneath the shingle, so it's not going to get in uh, the way of any water drainage or anything like that. But, you know, it looks very neat now. You can't even see the cable. So this is the way a common cable box looks on the side of a customer's home. So you can order these off of eBay, it's a, a cable box tool. So you basically pull back on this part here and you, sorry, you shove it into the box and then you start to twist it counterclockwise until it comes loose and you can open up your cable box here. So these are the two feeds that the, ha the customer has uh, going uh, into his home for his TVs. Uh, this is the main uh, feed as you can see. So the main Rogers feed comes here. It, it goes through this uh, ground block and then feeds into the, the splitter. If you follow the ground cable here, so this is the ground uh, wire. It's grounded properly up to the uh, hydrometer. So that's the common ground of the house, which is the proper way for it to be grounded. So uh, we're also going to show you today the proper way to ground the antenna. Because he's completely disconnecting from Rogers, um, 
He's on DSL internet, so he's not using any of these cables whatsoever. So we're going to utilize his existing ground block. We're going to run our antenna through this ground block so that it's grounded properly up at the hydrometer. And then also we'll utilize the splitter. That way we're saving the customer on costs for grounding and, and splitters. We'll utilize what he already has, and he does own this this equipment this is his equipment here so we'll just tie into the existing and then that will feed the antenna uh, throughout his house okay so there is the cable now that's all you see just coming over the east trough the cabling we have strapped down the inside of the eaves trough again so it's nice and neat we've run it behind the hydrometer here you can see it running along uh, it comes up into the cable box we've disconnected that main Rogers feed like we had said earlier uh, we've now connected our main antenna feed into the ground block and you can see it feeds around and goes into our two-way splitter to feed the two TVs in the house we've also taken the messenger ground that comes from the antenna up top so the antenna uh, and mount are grounded now by this wire which is of course grounded up to the main ground of the house off the hydrometer and also the coax on the antenna is also grounded because it comes through this grounded ground block here so that's it that's the complete antenna and wiring setup and installation so now we'll go inside and do a scan on the channels and see what uh, we get for signal and how many channels we get. Okay, so we're all set up here. This is the reception. This is channel 2, which is NBC out of Buffalo. 2.2, .2. getting channel 4, which is CBS. Channel 5, which is CBC Toronto. Channel 7, which is ABC. Channel 9, CFTO. Channel 17, which is uh, PBS WNED. I'll just skip through. There's three, three channels on channel 17. There's channel 19 TVO, we're getting 23, which is WNLO out of Buffalo. Got CBC French out of Toronto, there's Fox out of Buffalo. There's 29.2, which is a uh, country music channel. Uh, 40.1 is CJMT or Omni. 41.1 is Global out of Toronto. Forty-one two, which is global and standard deaf. Forty-three point seven. There's nothing on it. Forty-seven one is CFMT. Forty-nine point one is WNYO to Buffalo. And channel fifty-seven, which is City TV to Toronto. So there you go, the customer is getting uh, just over 20 channels. And that's what kind of reception you can get in this area with that antenna.